Okay, so a big question is, um, how much should I have in stocks as far as where I'm at in my life in relation to my goals? And is there some kind of you know guidance around that? And there is. If you search like portfolios or uh, stock and bond portfolios or portfolio allocation on the internet, you'll get a lot of different sites and things giving you maybe different information around you know, how to build a portfolio. I'm gonna share one with you here because I think it's really good and gives you some actual numbers versus just you know guessing or theory or saying, you're a modern investor, so you should be 50% stocks, 50% bonds. It actually gives you some historical data too. And it happens to be from Vanguard, so here's the link is here is on the slide, but if you're looking to go to it, you know, basically search Vanguard and under model portfolio allocations or model portfolio, if you put Vanguard model portfolio, you'll find it pretty easy. But you can see the link up the top here too on the screen. Uh, when we when we take a look at that. So uh, basically what Vanguard is going to show you is it's going to look at some average annual returns. Uh, it's going to show the best year, the worst year, and the number of years with a loss. And you get a feel for how much is in you know, these different asset classes in there. So let's take a look at that and you can kind of figure out, maybe start figuring out, well, where might I fall when I'm investing in stocks and other investments in as far as these different types of portfolios. Okay, here we are with some sample uh, portfolio allocation models. This is from Vanguard. You can see the link at the top here. Uh, basically, if you just search Vanguard uh, model portfolio or model, uh, model portfolio allocations and with Vanguard in the name, you're going to find it. Otherwise, here's the link. You can certainly you know, look at that and grab that. So uh, basically, these are model portfolios. Uh, uh, and they'll get an idea of different risks and things as you go through here, but uh, you can see it's looking at stocks and bonds and then like the green would be like some short-term uh, cash or things like that, looking over a long period of time. So if we look at, let's say the first one, which is 100% bonds, that means there's no, there's no um, uh, stocks in there at all. You can see a return of like 5.4% and the best year was then 1982, 32% on bonds. Wow, that was something. And then the worst year, 1969, down 8.1%. And then years with a loss, as we go through, you'll see how this changes. You know, 14 years, there was a loss. If you had a portfolio where you only invested in bonds, you didn't invest in stocks at all or any other instrument, just in bonds. And the Vanguard breaks this down by different categories. This happens to be the income category. As we go forward, you'll see, you know, some moderate and growth in different types of categories. So in this income category, uh, as you can see, they've got uh, bonds, but then they have like 20% stocks, 80% bonds. 30% stocks, 70% 70, 70 bonds, so some ideas of different things. If you're really looking for income, regular income coming in on a quarterly basis, and you're really looking for income, less about growth, because there's very few stocks in there, 20 or 30%, and more about income. And you can see as you add stocks, the returns go up. You get the 6.7, 7.2, because over time, stocks will outperform bonds over a long period of time, and this is over a long period of time. And you can see the years with a loss because it's riskier. You know, here at 20% stocks, 80% bonds, you know, you have 12 years with a loss. Actually, versus 14, this is a unique thing where by adding stocks and adding various investments, it actually reduces risk. It is kind of a funny thing. So if you look at this, uh, and this is true, this has been studied quite, quite a lot, and you can see the year, best years and the worst years. You can see there's more volatility, bigger ranges, those kind of things. But if you look at it, you'd say to yourself, wow, I could get a better return over time, this is all past performance, and I don't guarantee a future performance. But over time, if I invest 30% in stocks and 70% bonds, well, I can get a better return and still have the, you know, the same downside as far as years with a loss if I was 100% bonds. In fact, I'd be even better with years with a loss with 20% stocks and 80% bonds. So if you're an income investor looking at this, you might say, hey, I might want to add some safe dividend stocks. They'll pay me regular income. I need the income, but maybe I'll get a little growth. And actually, it helps reduce my risk as well. So this is the income category. This would be good if you're already retired or very close to retirement or where you're not looking for growth over a long period of time and really to kind of set it up. Now, let's say if you want a more of a balance type fund where you're, you're trying to reduce volatility, that means you're reducing risk. You're reducing how much it goes up and how much it goes down. You're trying to you know, limit those uh, short-term fluctuations as it, sa it says here. And it's thinking about more mid to long range investment time horizons. So not super long time horizon, but more of a mid. This is also good if you're looking for something a little bit less risky and less volatile. And you can see here, you know, they have different mixtures again, 40% stock, 60% bonds, as you keep going through here, 50-50 uh, and 60-40. Uh, and you can see how your returns start going up too. The more you add stocks, the more your returns go up. You can see these best years, worst years. You can see how your best year, when you get a 60% stocks, 40% bonds, pretty high, 36% in one year. And the worst year was down 26. Now this is old, this is back in the 30s. 
So this was when it was very volatile. You were looking, you know, right, right at the uh, right at the Roaring Twenties and Great Depression time. So uh, understand that, and you want, you want to look at a more recent number. But it gives you an idea of how volatile it is. Also, it gives you an idea. I like this years with a loss because you get a feel for. If I'm a risk adverse uh, investor, well, I might like this because I got more stock, but I'm only going to go down 16 out of uh, 90 periods, 90 years, versus going up here where I'm up to 21 now out of 90, and I'm eking out a little bit more return, but I'm going to have more risk as well if I'm 60-40. But this is kind of considered balance um, as far as like more of a balance type approach. Maybe you're getting closer to these mid or even a long-term uh, investment, but maybe you want to be more risk adverse with your long-term investment or you want something more balanced, or maybe you're getting closer to something like financial independence or retirement, and you want to start mixing in things like bonds and stuff to help reduce that, uh, reduce that rate, that, uh, that possibility of going down in those big losses. As we go to growth here, sample portfolios, once again, 70% stocks, 30% bonds, 80, 20, 100% stocks. You see a lot of people with, uh, who are younger or have a long time horizon, especially going to the 80, 20, uh, maybe 70, 30 to reduce it a little bit in, ter in terms of risk. But if you've got a long term, term, long -term uh, time horizon and you don't mind short term fluctuations, and you're, especially if you're okay with big fluctuations, you know, then you might want to go 80, 20, or 70, 30. And you can see, you know, at 70, 30, now I'm at a 9.1, and then I go to 9.5. At least historically, this is not necessarily what's going to happen the next year or two, but historically, and you can see these best and worst years uh, with that. And then years with a loss, 22 and 23 as far as years with a loss. So that means out of 90 years, 22 of those times I'm going to have a loss, even with those mixes, or 23 times. And I'm e able to get out better performance. Now you might have three years in a row with a loss, and they might be significant big losses. And you have to be understand your time horizon, and can you withstand that when you're building your portfolio as far as the mix of stocks and let's say, and let's say bonds. If you're looking at this and saying to yourself, well, if stocks are so good, especially if I have a long time horizon, I'm in my 20s or whatever, I'm like, let her ride, let her roll. Let's go 100% stocks. Hey, you could do that. You could go 100% stocks. You can maybe get some big average annual returns. You can see the fluctuations are pretty, pretty wide. I could be up 54% one year, down 41% or excuse me, down 43% the next year. You know, this is good questions when you look at these growth type portfolios. If you're down 30% or 20% in a year, what are you going to do? Are you going to hold on, which is good, and maybe buy more? That's what you should do if you're in this growth thing. If you sell, then you're buying high and selling low, which is the exact opposite of what we want to do. So if that is scary for you, then you might want to go back up into those more balanced type things, even if you have a long time time horizon. But if you want to get better returns, at least proven over time, and have a little bit more risk tolerance, you can take on more risk, then uh, more stocks for the long term is, is a good way to go. Uh, you start getting a hundred percent though, that, that gets a lot of scary for a lot of folks. Uh, but I see a lot of people in the growth phase, certainly for myself, I've been always running like 80, 20 for a long period of time. Even, even now, you know, as, as I'm older guy, I'm still more of the 80, 20, 70, between 75 and 80. And I'm getting closer to, um, to some of these goals, of course, uh, just cause I, you know, I have that higher risk tolerance. I'm used to it over the years. So, uh, in the bottom here, they give it a description of how the methodology they use, what, you know, they're basically using indexes, uh, looking at, you know, wide indexes, so they're not looking at individual stocks or anything. They're trying to give you a feel by using wide indexes. So it's a nicer methodology. Nothing's perfect, but it's a nice methodology. So if we scroll back up here, a good way to start with this is say, where am I at in terms of my goal? How far away am I? How, what's my risk tolerance? What's my need? Do I need income or do I need growth? And then find out what bucket you're, big bucket you're in. If I need income because I'm in retirement or very close to it, well, this is maybe what I'm looking at. Maybe I like that 30-70. If I need something a little bit more risk adverse and I need a little more balance in my portfolio, well, then maybe I'm at these 40-50% levels of stocks and bonds versus, and then I can even put in more cash and things to help reduce risk too. I um, mean, you can put in other assets as well, but just a simple cash and bonds. Uh, that they have here and you can look at these numbers and kind of scroll through these numbers and then if I'm like no I'm let's I want to grow I want to grow my funds I want to grow my money that's why I'm investing in stocks hey that's why I'm taking your course well terrific uh, glad you did <laughs> so growth wise you know then you might want to be looking at these 70 30 80 20s 100 percent you better have an iron stomach if you want to do the 100 um, percent and certainly make sure you're diversified don't put 100 percent in two stocks you know, make sure you get some nice exchange trade funds or mutual funds or at least hold a nice portfolio of 30 stocks or, or so to help give you some, uh, 
uh, give you at least some diversity if you want to go that route. That's the nice thing with like a mutual fund. You can get hundreds of stocks by basically buying one fund as far as that diversity. But growth is all about you know more risk, more volatility, but that better long-term growth. So once again, you can get this in yourself, print it out from the Vanguard Group, uh, search uh, model portfolio allocations. And over time, and as you get used to your investing, as you or become more experienced with an investor, you might shift between these different portfolio allocations, and that's good as part of rebalancing. But right here, my whole goal with this was to give you an idea of what it might look like in terms of portfolio, and I really hope this helps you as far as when you start deciding how much stocks you wanna buy, and then in there, we start getting down into more detail, like, what types of stocks to buy, dividend stocks, growth stocks, international, large cap, small cap, all these different things we can look at to build the sub parts of this portfolio. But from the macro level, at least this gets you a start and there's other tools out there, but I hope this gives you a start and gets you on the right track and gets you a feel for what your portfolio might look like now and in the future.